In the first recap, we saw that Zora's parents, concerned about her safety after she was attacked by an unseen entity named Wittery, enlisted the aid of a psychic named Sikar. They decided to disable Zora's ability to see and hear the unseen and erase her memory of being an indigo child. However, after years, Wujuri returns and begins to disturb Zora's sister Ninda, who is also an indigo child. Initially skeptical, Zora decides to confront Wujuri after facing the entity herself and witnessing its impact on her sister. Seeking Seeker's help once more, Zora learns from her that her current power is insufficient to deal with the entity. They must re-enable Zora's abilities to confront the entity effectively. To gain a better understanding, I recommend watching the first part. You can find the link in the description below, or by clicking on the card above. After this, as Ninda uses the washroom, she feels someone's presence there and is terrified to spot Wittery lurking behind a curtain. Despite her fear, she bravely moves ahead and pushes the curtain aside, finding no one there. However, the moment she turns around, Widuri launches an attack. Hearing her scream, everyone rushes to her help, and when Axa forcefully opens the bathroom door, they find Ninda suspended in the air, held by an unseen force attributed to Widuri. As Widuri looks at them, Sekra quickly takes out an amulet and begins reciting prayers, causing Widuri to vanish, and Ninda collapses to the floor unconscious. Sekra warns them that despite their momentary victory, Widuri is still there. She rushes outside, confronting Widuri and daring her to appear in front of her, only to be horrified to find Widuri clutching her daughter Alma. And then, in a chilling moment, Widuri leaps out the window with Alma, leading to her tragic death. A few days later, when Sekar is leaving to help Ninda, Dafa mentions that her daughter has recently passed away. And even after his father's death, she traveled out of town to assist with a possession case. Sekar returns to Daffa and tells him that she can give her life to get Elma and his dad back. She expresses that becoming a person that you can't accept isn't what she wished for. She points out that no one with indigo abilities ever asked for them, and she often questions whether the challenging life of an indigo, marked by the loss of loved ones due to their powers, is truly worth it. She agrees with him, acknowledging that such abilities can indeed feel like a curse. Meanwhile, the doctor informs Zora that they still haven't been able to diagnose Ninda's illness, and she is now in a semi-coma state. Upon Seeker's arrival, Zora blames herself for Alma's death, but Sekar reassures her that it's not her fault, and they should focus on Ninda's condition. Zora then reveals that when Widuri held Ninda, she witnessed Widuri's entire past, and it's all connected to her family. Now using her retrocognition powers, Zora delves into the past and discovers that her grandmother Rani also can communicate with the unseen. And she tells Adiviria that the devil demands a pregnant woman. Zora is then transported to a village, witnessing Wittery, seven months pregnant, with her grandmother secretly observing her. Next, she finds herself in a forest where her grandparents worship the devil and they have kidnapped Wittery to offer her as a sacrifice in exchange for inexhaustible wealth for their family lineage. They understand that her grandma misused her powers and Wujuri holds a grudge. That's why she came back. Returning to the past, one fateful night, Rayani encounters Wujuri's ghost for the first time. She says it cannot inhabit her child's body because she is not an indigo. And then she grabs a knife and declares it will never inhabit her body and tragically takes her own life. Sekar discloses that Widuri cannot possess a dead body and can only possess descendants of her grandmother who are indigos. Zora's grandpa and her parents are not indigos, making Zora and Ninda the targets of Widuri's possession due to the deal her grandmother made with the devil. However, Zora then reveals that Widuri doesn't just want to possess a human body but she desires to have a baby. Sekar warns that if Widuri gives birth, it will usher in a new age of darkness. The child will inherit traits from the world of the dead, leading to even greater chaos. She emphasizes that this threat is far more significant than they realized, highlighting the grave consequences for humanity. They decide to keep Ninda safe in Sekar's house, where she can closely monitor her and they should let their powers flow to keep Ninda strong and protected from Wajiri's influence. Later, when Zora comes out to eat something, she feels someone's presence in the house. She goes after him to investigate and gets shocked to see Axe's late dad Agus there. She asks him if can she help him? 
to which he shows her a flashback from 2005, when he notices Zora's grandfather is going somewhere late at night. Intrigued, he follows him and is shocked to see Adiveria worshipping the devil on the land where their sacrifice is buried. Suddenly he comes to know about Agus's presence there, and when Agus tries to escape, Adiviria kills him out of fear of his truth coming out. Later, she informs Axa that she saw his father and reveals that he was killed by her grandfather. She explains that her grandfather was worshipping at the site where the sacrifice was buried in the backyard of their Boger house, and he strangled Axa's father to prevent anyone from finding out. Sekar asks her, did he said anything else to her? To which she says he said goodbye and that his death is proof of human greed, and that if they keep living in that circle, it means they are living in the devil's circle. Sekar explains to Zora that they can repel a spirit by directly confronting its remains. Therefore, destroying Widdery's remains could drive her away. Axa offers to retrieve the remains from Bogor. Sekar adds that the ritual involving the deal with the devil begins at 11 p.m., the time when Widuri continues to haunt Ninda, and it coincides with the full moon. The remains must be brought before 11 p.m., and they must destroy them before the full moon becomes obscured, or else it will be too late. Axa promptly leaves for Bogor, and en route, he receives texts from Yudi, to which he replies that he is quitting the project and the company, and that he won't stay silent about the corruption. Meanwhile, Sikar observes Daffa preparing for the ritual, and when she says he doesn't have to do this, he mentions reading Alma's diary and emphasizes that if he doesn't help her, who else will? They then rush to Zora and inform her that Axa will be here in 15 minutes. However, on his way back, Axa meets with an accident, and upon managing to exit the car, he discovers that Yudi caused the collision. Meanwhile, as they wait for Axa, the clock strikes 11 o'clock, and Sekar warns Zora not to allow Wittery to enter her or Ninda. After a while, they realize that Wittery has arrived, and Sekar reassures Zora not to be afraid and emphasizes the need for focus, or they won't be able to defeat Widuri. After a while, Zora hears Widuri's voice and gets terrified seeing her right in front of her. It then enters Zora's body, causing her to become unconscious and collapse on the floor. Sekar attempts to wake Zora up, but recoils in fear as Zora opens her eyes, and to their horror, Sekar and Daffa witness Zora rising to her feet, now possessed by Widuri. She smiles at Sekar and then moves towards the mirror and looking at herself. Widuri says she has been waiting for this moment and tells Sekar that there is nothing else she can do. After this, she goes to Ninda and says she should not have visited her, and if only she could live in Zora's body since then, they would be sisters. She then turns to Daffa and orders him to cook something for her, stating that she is hungry. Sekar instructs him to follow Widuri. And when Daffa offers her food, Wittery holds his hand and asks him to sit with her. Daffa complies and sits down. And after eating and drinking, Wittery tells him that there is another soul that is more powerful than the owner of this body. She declares that Adhiwiria's wealth now belongs to her, and tells him that she used to be a poor woman married to a farmer, and asserts that this wealth is rightfully hers, not those who sacrificed her, nor their descendants. She reveals that she is allied with the devil, and her lord has never left her. Meanwhile, when Aksa regains consciousness, he calls Sekar and informs her about the accident. Just then, Ninda also wakes up, and Sakar informs her that Widuri has possessed Zora. However, she is confident that Widuri hasn't fully gained control of Zora's body yet, so they still have time to expel her. On the other hand, Widuri tells Daffa that she dislikes her mother as she keeps obstructing her. But she likes him, and suggests that the devil would be pleased if they were to have children. She then gets up and says, let's create a new age. Sekar instructs Ninda to assist Axa and retrieve the remains, and just as she leaves, Daffa men manages to knock Widuri down, prompting Sekar to rush to help her and together they bring Widuri to the dining table. Then, using her amulet, Sakar starts reciting prayers in an attempt to expel Widuri. However, Widuri forcefully throws Daffa aside and grabs Sekar by the throat, 
hurling her onto a table and rendering her unconscious. Daffa gets up and strikes Widjuri with a chair, but nothing happens to her. Instead, Widjuri seizes him by the throat and hurls him aside, rendering him unconscious as well. Meanwhile, when Ninda reaches the spot, she finds that he is seriously injured, but he tells her that the bones are in the car down there. Later, when Daffa regains consciousness, he discovers Wittery on the table, who asserts that nobody can remove her from this body, and accuses Daffa of mistreating her, despite her previous polite requests. Just then, Zora struggles to resist the demon within her and demands Widjuri to get out of her body. However, Widjuri counters, asserting her superiority and warning Zora to be silent, or else Daffa will die. She adds that she doesn't need Daffa anyway and can find another man to impregnate her. Widjuri then asserts full control over Zora's body, seeing which Daffa gets terrified and attempts to flee. However, Widjuri pursues him and stabs him with a knife before hurling him aside. She then tries to finish him off, but Daffa fights back, eventually managing to escape. As Widuri chases him again, they both fall from the first floor and lose consciousness. However, after a while, Widuri opens her eyes and gets up on her feet. Meanwhile, Sakar regains consciousness and observes Widuri approaching Daffa with the intent to kill him. Just in time, she puts the amulet around her neck and pushes Widuri back, causing them both to fall through a window. Enraged, Widuri gets up and attempts to strangle Sekar. However, Daffa regains consciousness and rushes to help his mother. He pulls Widuri away, and at that moment, Ninda arrives with Widuri's remains. She approaches Sekar and helps her to get up, who hands her that amulet and asks her to help Daffa. Ninda rushes to her sister and tries to wake her up, and Sekar rushes to begin the ritual to destroy Widuri's remains. Widuri knocks down Ninda and Daffa. But as she rushes towards Sekar to stop her, Sekar throws her remains into the fire. This action halts Widuri midway, and the three of them watch as Widuri is expelled from Zora's body before Zora falls unconscious on the table. Ninda rushes to Zora and wakes her up, while Daffa asks Sekar if it's over. Sekar says they are too late, as the full moon is now covered, and she doesn't know what will happen next. After this, we see that Zora has put the Bogor house up for sale, and Yudi has been arrested for his actions. Zora and Aksa now run an orphanage together, and they finally get married. The movie fast forwards a few months, showing Zora, now pregnant, reading Alma's diary, and she tells Aksa that Alma's perspective doesn't seem to be from an indigo. Aksa expresses that he doesn't care if their baby is born an indigo or not. Suddenly, Zora notices Ninda walking past her room, looking scared, concerned, Zora approaches her and asks what happened, to which Ninda reveals that she had a dream about impending chaos and fears she may not be able to prevent it. Ninda reveals the existence of a dark age, explaining that Widuri desired to possess a human body and live as a human. The devil granted her wish, but it was a trick, as the devil intended to inhabit the human body itself, and Widuri was merely a pawn. Ninda warns that if the devil enters the host body, even for a moment, it will be able to implant something there. Now, it is revealed that it was Zora's grandmother who made the deal with the devil. The pact stipulated that she and her descendants would assist the devil in birthing its children into the world in exchange for inexhaustible wealth. As Zora perceives the movement of the devil within her stomach, the movie concludes, Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like. Summon that subscribe button and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.